Now let's talk about contrast in two-way MANOVA. And we're gonna have to take a little detour uh, to start talking about this. So ANOVA uh, and MANOVA as well can also be written in a multiple regression framework. Um, we can build an equivalent regression model to uh, any ANOVA model. And we'll talk more about multivariate multiple regression next week. Um, but because of the way R works, we have to start a little preview now. Um, so what we're gonna think about this is, is that for each participant, um, we have a vector of observations on the dependent variable um, Y. So in the example that we looked at uh, in the last set of slides um, about the uh, uh, well-being and sleep quality uh, based on exercise and diet, uh, the vector represents uh, a score for well-being and a score for sleep quality. So uh, our Y is a vector of um, those two variables. So in the regression framework, we dummy code our grouping variables. Um, so uh, there are other contrasts that are possible, but uh, dummy coding is the most common and often the most intuitive. Um, so the way the dummy coding works is that if a participant is a member of a given group, we uh, assign them uh, a one and otherwise a zero. Uh, other coding schemes are possible, um, but this is the most intuitive. Um, but the other key is that for all, for each grouping variable, so for um, the diet and exercise, for example, um, one variable gets all zeros. And so this is the reference group. So every other group then um, gets compared to the reference group. Um, so in R, this is called uh, the, the treatment coding uh, or the treatment contrast. Uh, and this, this applies to nominal unordered categorical variables. And this is the, this is the default in R. So the example we're looking at is very simple. Um, here's a slightly more complex version of dummy coding. Um, so here we're going back to the Star Wars idea. So here I'm, I'm looking at six Star Wars films, um, setting them up as a factor. Um, and so here I check my contrast. So we see we have uh, our first reference category, which this is always gonna default to alphabetical in R, you can change it. Um, but so here the, the first alphabetical entry is clones. And so that gets all zeros. And then every other subsequent film uh, in alphabetical order gets a one uh, for uh, that particular uh, um, parameter. So um, we can think of uh, clones as the reference category. And then so this, this column, this is the empire column. So this compares empire to clones. Um, this compares uh, uh, Jedi to clones, so on and so forth. So, in this example, again, clones is the reference category. Um, and if we were to uh, enter this model in, in th th this variable into some kind of regression model, there would be five beta coefficients, um, one for each clones group, or one for each non-clones group, um, which would be the difference between that group and clones. Um, but what if, when we saw this type of contrast earlier, it used negative one and one instead of zero and one. So what, what, what gives? What's different about a regression model that makes us a little bit different? The difference is a regression model has an intercept. Um, and so the contrast we saw before were for a case where we weren't thinking about things in terms of an intercept. Um, when we write an ANOVA as a regression with dummy coding, the intercept represents the value of the dependent variable across each reference group. Um, so uh, each group that's, that's coded um, for as, all, as strictly as, as all zeros. Uh, thus, the betas represent the deviations from the intercept uh, based on group membership or the difference between um, that, that the, the, the group that beta represents and the reference group. So here in our contrasts, um, I'm going to set my uh, grouping variable, variables to be factors and check their contrast. So we see that the control is the reference category uh, and treatment is uh, the, um, the non-reference category, the ones compared to the reference category. So both of our contrasts are set up uh, how we want. Uh, control is zero, treatment's one. So then our regression model becomes um, y equals beta zero, which is the intercept, um, plus beta one times treatment, uh, diet treatment, plus uh, beta two times exercise treatment. So these are the betas that represent the treatment conditions for both of those grouping variables. And then finally, we have uh, the interaction beta three times diet treatment uh, times exercise treatment. And then error. And this is a this is a, an equivalent model to a two-way ANOVA model, the ANOVA MANOVA model that we've seen. So, in each case here, um, the betas are actually vectors of betas, but the the, uh, the 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 diet treatment and exercise treatment are just scalars; they're just ones or zeros. 
and of course, why is a vector of uh, well being and uh, sleep quality. So if we want the estimated means uh, for someone in the diet control and exercise treatment condition, which I'll call uh, Y bar CT for control and treatment, how would we write that? So we would do uh, Y bar CT equals beta zero plus beta one times zero because uh, we are in the control group for diet. So the uh, we, this represents treatment for diet, so we're zeroing that out. Um, then beta two times one, because we are in the treatment group uh, for exercise. Um, and then, uh, so beta three times zero times one. So uh, our y bar CT, just after we zero out everything that has a zero, becomes uh, beta zero plus beta two. Uh, what about someone in y bar CC? Uh, so for that, uh, we would zero everything out. Uh, so that's just, again, beta zero. So beta zero is um, the value of someone in the reference category for all groups. Uh, what about someone in both treatment groups? There we do the opposite. Um, everything gets a one uh, and we get beta zero plus beta one plus beta two plus beta three. So the reason this helps us is because it's the way R thinks about ANOVA. Uh, and it's the way uh, the linear hypothesis function is actually thinking about this stuff. Um, so when we looked at this last week, um, we simplified things by suppressing the intercept, um, which actually just makes each beta value um, the value of that uh, that group uh, for for the, for a one-way model. But that doesn't quite work in a in a two-way model uh, the same way. Um, so this is how we have to think about things when we have two or more grouping variables. So uh, our, our, what the linear hypothesis is actually doing is it's uh, creating a linear combination of the regression coefficient, uh, including the intercept. So if we want to compare two cross groups, uh, we need to think of how we would get the contrasts for, uh, for example, um, y bar one uh, minus y bar two. So let's look at our coefficients in R to make sure they match our notation. Um, so we see here that they do. So um, the first coefficient is uh, the diet condition treatment. The second is exercise condition treatment. And then the last is the interaction between uh, diet treatment and exercise treatment. So uh, again, beta zero is well being and sleep in uh, both control groups. Um, beta one is the difference between diet treatment and uh, control in the exercise control group. Beta two is the difference between exercise treatment and control in the diet control group. And then beta three is the difference between diet treatment and control in the exercise treatment and diet treatment. Uh, it's the difference between diet treatment and control in exercise treatment and diet treatment and control in exercise control and uh, vice versa. Uh, so it's essentially you're adding everything. So you, you have to add, um, all four things to get uh, the, uh, the the treatment treatment factor. So it's just the, a, th a third additive term to get the interaction, the, the, the to get both uh, treatment groups. So if we want to compare uh, our uh, control treatment to treatment treatment, so this is uh, this is uh, control diet treatment exercise to uh, treatment exercise or treatment diet treatment exercise, uh, we would need two different contrasts. So the first one, uh, we are going to uh, use the following contrast. So we're gonna uh, zero out beta one. Uh, we're gonna put a one next to beta two and then beta three also gets zeroed out. Um, but we also need to remember that this is thinking about the intercept as well. So we always have the intercept um, involved in this contrast. So this is actually uh, beta zero times one, beta one uh, times zero, beta two times one, beta three times zero. So our first contrast is one, zero, one, zero, because remember, we need that intercept. Well, we always need the intercept. Uh, so for the second one, um, we're getting beta one times one, beta two times one, uh, and beta three times one times one, which is times one. So this is just gonna be four, one. So we're getting the uh, intercept, beta one, beta two, and beta three. So now we're gonna subtract these two. Um, so we're gonna take C1 minus C2. Uh, and that's going to give us the difference between uh, these two contrasts, which is the linear combination we're interested in here. Uh, and this is what we're going to use in the hypothesis matrix uh, in, in the linear hypothesis function. Uh, and so here's the output we get 
uh, for this test. So this is the comparison uh, between uh, control treatment uh, and treatment treatment. So this is a pairwise comparison between uh, the cr two cross groups um, control. So this is uh, again, control for diet, treatment for exercise, and then treatment for diet, treatment for exercise. And so we see that th this group is significantly different. So participants who are in the treatment condition for both diet and exercise are significantly different from those in the control for diet, but treatment for exercise uh, on well-being and sleep quality, uh, blah, blah, blah. Here's my statistical results. So let's try another one. Um, let's compare participants in uh, both control groups uh, to participants in treatment for diet and control for exercise. So first, what's our contrast for uh, YBRCC? So we're going to zero everything out here um, because that's YBRCC, so everything gets a zero. But remember, we still need to keep our intercept. So we're going to have a one here at the beginning. And then so Y bar TC. So here we're going to uh, have a one for uh, beta one, but everything else gets zeroed out. Um, so this is going to be one, one, zero, zero. Again, don't forget about the intercept. Uh, then we'll take C1 minus C2. Uh, and we're going to get zero minus one, zero, zero. Uh, and so that is uh, our contrast here. And again, here's our interpretation. Uh, participants in the control group for both diet and exercise were not significantly different from those in the treatment group for diet and control group for exercise. Uh, so uh, uh, it seems like uh, the, the, the treatment for um, diet uh, did not have, a, have an impact on its own. Uh, so the other thing we're going to talk about now, uh, that's how we do cross comparisons. Um, so if the interaction was not significant, uh, but the main effects were significant, we would need to look at marginal comparisons. Um, so uh, we looked at cross comparisons, which is you know the two the two all, all four pairwise versions um, of a lot, like a, the, each possible uh, pairing of group memberships. But if the, that's only if the interaction was significant. If it's not, uh, we need to get the contrasts. Uh, the marginal contrast for diet, if we want those, uh, we would need to compare the, the diet control group um, to the diet treatment group at the average between treatment and control. Um, so to get this, uh, we have to change our model a bit. So the contrast for the group, uh, so, uh, so the contrast for the grouping variable we're marginalizing over uh, represent deviations from the mean. Um, and so this is uh, getting a, a bit funky, but uh, this is the way we have to do it. There's, I'm sure there are other ways to do this, but this is the way I think. Um, so this is sometimes called effects coding. Um, so in R, this is denoted with control sum, or uh, uh, this means that essentially sum to zero. Uh, so first, I'm going to set my new contrasts, um, and then I can. Uh, so I'm going to change my contrast for exercise condition to uh, sum. So now you see that there are one and negative one. Um, so that means now that the uh, the reference, the, the thing that they're referencing now is the average between them. So the intercept is re is representing the average between them. Uh, so I can use update to re uh, rerun my model with the new contrasts. So uh, now that I've changed the contrast here, I can just update my model. Uh, so the global model fit will not change. This will be identical to what we saw before. Um, the contrasts don't affect global model fit. Uh, but the coefficients have changed. Um, so now we have uh, different different coefficients in each case. Uh, so the intercept is now uh, the diet control group at the average of exercise, um, and beta one is the difference between diet treatment and diet control at the average of, of exercise. And we can effectively ignore beta two and beta three. Um, they represent deviations from the average of control and treatment for exercise. Um, but this con th this is not the contrast we're interested in um, because now we're looking at uh, the compare we're, we're trying to compare uh, the treatment for diet uh, and uh, control for diet at the average of exercise. So that makes our hypothesis a comparison between uh, so that I'm calling this y c all uh, and y t all. So now uh, it's uh, beta zero. Uh, so we zero everything out in y c all, um, and then we include beta one. Uh, uh, in yt all, and don't forget we always need to intercept. So uh, 
this is the contrast we would use zero, uh, negative one, uh, zero, zero, um, because these are the two contrasts that we're comparing. Um, and then this is the difference between them. Um, so that gives us our uh, marginal contrast. Um, so this is the difference between uh, treatment and control for diet at the average of exercise. Uh, and here's the full output. Uh, and here's the interpretation. Uh, across uh, all levels of exercise, the differences between treatment and control for diet on well being and sleep quality were simultaneously uh, significantly different. Uh, lambda equals uh, 0.89, uh, blah, 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 statistical results. And remember, this is what we do typically only if the interaction is not significant. If the interaction is significant, we don't do this piece. Um, we do, we do uh, cross comparisons if the interaction is significant. We do marginal comparisons only if not. Uh, so to do the other marginal contrast, I have to switch my uh, contrasts around. So I change um, my diet contrast. So now I'm looking at exercise at the average level of diet. So I switch diet to control uh, to some, uh, I switch exercise to treatment, uh, update my model again. Uh, and then uh, I check, this is the, the, this is the um, linear contrast that we would need. The, this is the difference between the two contrasts that we would need. And so here's the full result. Uh, so here's a little bit of a, a sort of workflow that you could think about um, in two-way MANOVA. So the first step is to test the interaction. If the interaction is significant, um, we're going to, in step 2a, uh, we're going to do test pairwise cross contrasts. So we're going to do cross contrast here um, for all, uh, all, all pairs of cross groups. Um, then we're going to do step 2b, test univariate two-way ANOVAs with interaction. Uh, then step three, if the univariate interactions were significant, um, then we're going to test the significant pairwise cross contrast in the univariate model only if they were significant in the multivariate model. Um, if the univariate actions are not significant, but the main effects are, um, we can then do pairwise univariate marginal contrasts uh, for the main effects. But we should be careful because we didn't actually test this uh, in the, uh, the, the multivariate model. So we should be careful about multiple comparisons. If the interaction is not significant, um, but the main effects are in the multivariate model, um, then we'll test pairwise marginal contrasts in the multivariate model. Uh, then we'll do univariate ANOVAs without interaction. Um, and then, uh, actually, I don't think that's correct. I think we should do, the, you should still include the interaction in the univariate ANOVAs possibly. Uh, I'll have to double check with David. Um, but then we're gonna test the univariate marginal contrasts only if those marginal contrasts um, and univariate ANOVAs were significant. Um, so just here at the end, uh, I have a little bit of a review on how to do the two-way univariate stuff in R. Um, so uh, we, to get our correct type three tests, um, we uh, need everything to be set uh, as um, control sum. Um, we actually can't get the correct type three tests uh, if um, everything is uh, control treatment. So R gets really weird with these contrasts. We have to start them out as control sum uh, to get the correct uh, uh, um, type three tests in the, the, the omnibus test. Uh, so like in one way contrasts, um, uh, like in one way uh, contrasts are easier. Um, we can use, uh, define our contrasts with E-means and uh, check them with pairs or contrast. Um, we can get cross contrast by listing all of our grouping variables in the specs argument for pairs. So here I'm just listing them all I'm listing both my grouping variables uh, here and then uh, getting my pairs. Uh, sometimes we don't want all pairwise contrast. Um, so the, for this, we use contrast. Um, and we enter a list of comparisons we want to make into method, um, where each, uh, in this case, e each comparison represents one of the uh, four crossed groups. Um, so here, I'm just doing um, control in both conditions against uh, the other three groups only. So this is the, the, the first, so this is control control versus treatment control versus control treatment and treatment treatment. Um, so that the, this is how you would do that um, with the contrast function. Uh, and so I don't wanna spend too much time on this. I know this video is already very long. So here's our uh, interpretation of uh, one of these results. And for marginal contrasts, um, we just, uh, 
for in the specs argument, we just include one of our grouping variables. Um, and we'll get a little warning that this may be misleading due to interaction. Um, so again, if the interaction is significant, you wouldn't usually interpret this. Um, and this gives us our pairwise contrast between uh, control and treatment uh, for diet at the average of exercise.